Hello, hello. We're well. Let's pretend that we we were never off. <laughs> Welcome everybody to lecture number twenty-seven. Today we're going to be talking about mentality of a healthy artist warrior. And uh, who didn't know? We tried to start the stream once before, and then we got interrupted by. Um, transformers and a tractor right by the window so i have to go outside and battle the tractor <laughs> i'm kidding i just went outside and politely asked my uh awesome landlord to if should i should i postpone my lecture and he said for, uh, very kindly that uh, it's okay i can go ahead hi again yeah we're gonna wait for five minutes <laughs> as usual to get all of our viking family back into the stream um yeah i probably should do another oh man i have to do another link now for instagram too okay just have to do delete the previous one hey everyone let's go we are back okay cool and then, yeah, we're just gonna wait for people to join and then I have to redo the freaking thing. I have to go to Instagram. And yeah, guys, if you want to support the stream, just, you know, go to Instagram and then do the, the new link thingamajig, right? To do it again. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. I'm pulling out my phone. I'm taking a picture. I'm copying the link from YouTube. I'm copy pasting the link from YouTube. I'm pushing the post button. I'm saying, come say hi. Come say hi. Come say, oh, come on. Super fingers. No, that's the problem with having fat fingers, guys. You miss the buttons all the time. All right, I did it. I did it. And I'm putting my phone down. Oh, breathing out, breathing in. <laughs> and we have two minutes till we start. Do do do. Where are you all? Where are my Vikings? Here you are. Here you are. We are back. Yes, we are back. <laughs> for lost half of the people but it's okay uh yeah this is my you know this is my evil plan so i like every start the stream so you 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 see ads again and again and again and i get my four dollars <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding uh what are we spamming today i'm not sure what we're spamming today guys um whatever you feel whatever you feel honestly what you do actually works so yeah we are back we are back we are back do 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 yeah i unlisted the previous video guys so it's saved in the history so if you want to rewatch it it'll be there <laughs> all right i'm gonna take a sip of coffee Because I'm out of peach juice. Please send peach juice. No distractor will stop us from getting to Valhalla. Yes. Roger testing the artist's mentality with his tractor. <laughs> Didn't get an ad this time. Oh, because I turned the monetization off. I think. Okay. All right. Now it's on. Because we are horrible people trying to maintain what we're doing okay i think uh yeah so we probably should start now because you know you've been waiting for a long time for this and i've been waiting for a long time for this so welcome everybody to lecture number who <sighs> 27 today i'm gonna be with a webcam on because you know i want this stream to be a little bit personal it's you and me you and i we all together as Vikings gathering here to discuss important juju. And today's topic is very, it's very important topic, at least for me. It's motivation, productivity, 
and burnout. Um, I'm gonna start a little bit from far away <sighs> with your own journey as an artist. What what soft skills you need to acquire and what mentality you need to acquire to actually be able to survive through the whole art battle, I call it. It's, it's a real war when we are trying to create every day. And then it's a real war to maintain our creativity, good juju across the whole thing, not to get demoralized and stressed out. And in my life, I developed a few tricks or outlooks on life in general that helps me out or systems, I guess, that help help me out to battle, I call it, or some people call it the resistance, the force that is pushing us towards depressing thoughts, uh, unproductivity, because procrastination is a little bit different. I'll explain why and all of that stuff. So without further ado, let's just, you know, let's just start. So each of you guys are basically a climber or a warrior standing in front of a, you know, a giant, a giant mountain. And then on top of that mountain is an illusionary goal. For different people, it's different things. But we're all standing here together looking at that thing and being terrified by it. For you, it could be, I want to become a freelancer. For someone else, it could be, I want to freelance for Blizzard or a studio. For some people, it's just, you know, I just want to make my portfolio. I want to get the first hundred, you know, subscribers on Instagram or something like that. So for everybody, their goal is different. And there's no correct answer what the goal is. The only thing is, in the beginning of this journey, what helps you to ascend this path of epicness is you need to know who you are and what you're fighting for. Why? Because I'm going to tell you this, guys. Knowing who you are, and what you stand for, what your morals, what, what you, why you are who you are is one of the most important things that you need to know about yourself. Why? Because your goal at the end of the mountain can technically change year to year after you answer a few questions about yourself. And the main question should be, am I doing what I love? Am I, do, am, am I being who I am, right? Am I doing something because I see sense in it and I am changing the world for the best? Because art should be never a path that you take because you like money. It should be never a path or any creative path is because you need to, you know, get on a pedestal or anything else. I hate when artists in general put other artists on pedestal and, and get in the industry, especially the visual development industry, all for the wrong reasons. So if you are here in the chat and the, the number one thing that is in your brain is that I'm going to get a lot of followers and I'm going to get, you know, famous and you know, I'll get a lot of money out of it and prestige. Those are side effects of one thing. Those are side effects. Those, those should never be the main goal. The main goal should be always telling stories and through stories and through our art, communicating something that is important to you. It's like, as my father always said, a good artist has something to say, a bad artist has nothing to say. You know, a good artist is like a little prophet or, uh, you know, it, it, they, they have a core to them. They have their sets of values, morals and things that they stand for and they know who they are as human beings. And that translates through their art. And then when you know who you are and what you stand for and what you're trying to do, again, in the beginning, it's never super solid. It's a, it's a taste, it's a sense, it's a, it's a feeling, and then you start pursuing. But the thing is, if you are going to answer yourself, what do I stand for? What does, what does make my heart tickle? You will get 
a sense of a goal. So for me, when I was starting out, it was, let's say, freelance, and that was my top of the mountain, or quitting my day job. And then I started ascending. And for some people, you know, the, the path is super straight. For some people, it's very whiny. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter where you start from. So for example, Hans Zimmer, I think, started as a trombone player, right? And then he ended up being a music composer for film. A music composer for film, right? So that's another goal that probably he discovered on the way. Why? Because he was always answering one question. Is it something that I stand for? Is it something that tickles my heart? Is it me? Is my life fulfilling right now? And is everything that I'm doing is me, right? And the thing is, if you're going to be answering those questions on your path, your final destination might change, but you'll get to it anyways because you're going to be answering the right questions along the way that's going to be correcting your course up the mountain, right? So, for example, for me as an example, uh, right? So, for me, for example, I wanted to be a, um, an environment artist. I want to be a freelancer. And then I was like, okay, I lived in a trailer by the t at the time, it's just a trailer that you put on a little tractor and then I had a day job that I went to and along the way I discovered concept art and I was like this is awesome can I make money with this right and then the reason why I wanted to make money with it because I wanted to do more art and less day job so and then the, the answer was yes I want to do it because it's awesome I'll be creative and that's what I'm good at and that's, again, analyzing what you're good at and what you stand for and who you are. Because, for example, art and, uh, you know, creative thinking, I always, I always thought in pictures. So, for example, if I went to a grocery store, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see words. I would see me getting in the truck, you know, getting the eggs, maybe getting in the fight with some kind of dude in the aisle, then coming back with eggs, right? So it was always in my nature because I knew who I was when I discovered the word concept art. It was, a not, it was a nice first step to go forward, right? And then I discovered what? I discovered color keys and then discovered storytelling, cinematography. As you can see here, all those steps might not be the straightest path ever because not everyone is lucky to know what they're good at and what their, you know, what, what their thing is, right? So for me, I thought it was this, but... There was an essence of something that I liked because it was resonating with my soul and my heart, right? And then at some point in this stage of my life, I was dissatisfied with it. It was not exciting anymore. It was, it was something was lacking. And that's very important to have this conversation with yourself is not settling for less. Because a lot of people I know in the industry and a lot of people who are just starting out, they will trade anything anything if they can get a quick buck or maybe some kind of a you know studio position and they would you know almost sell their soul to acquire that but the thing is i've talked to many people on you know art talks and conferences um i, I talked on many conferences mainly in russia but there was this weird conversation that i had with many people and they would show me their portfolio and then they would tell me where they wanted to be. And then there was, you know, there was a big dissonance between their portfolio and where they wanted to be. Because like, let's say there was this one artist who said, I really want to be uh, a Blizzard artist to work on their cinematics, for example. Uh, and for example, here, they have their portfolio and it was like Candy Crush and, you know, super, you know, moms and pops, casual gaming stuff. And I said, why? And they said, well, that brings money. And then, and then that's it. And that's my job. And I said, well, you want to be here. Why are you settling for here? And most of the time they just stare unknowingly. And for the most part, it's because people are settling for less and then end up in a position that they hate and don't like. Why? Because they weren't following, well, you know, their sense of what, who they are and what they are best at because my strong belief is every human being has a God-given talent and someone is really good at something, right? 
And then if you pursue that, you'll you'll be the most happy, maybe not the richest person in the world, but you'll be the most happy because you will feel a sense of not accomplishment, that too, but for the most part, you'll have a sense of meaning and that you're doing what you're good at. And then you end up in the positions that is values who you are and what you do. So one point that I want to make is a good mentality of an artist is you need to be you need to be cherished for what you are and what your strong suits are, right? And then if you don't belong to a place or you don't belong to a job, or you don't belong to a studio or a position, no matter what, how many money do they pay and how awesome it is, you probably will either die off on that thing or you'll be not the best you. So first responsibility of a healthy artist is you need to be you and you need to find your artistic voice. You need to know who you are, but I gonna, again, I gonna just put it on an umbrella, know thyself, right? Or know yourself. Because another thing is self-reflection is a very important part of our artistic path. Because if you do not understand yourself and you don't know what you stand for, what kind of stories tickle your heart, it'll be really hard to navigate through this thing because honestly, there's too many heartless, you know, people and then soulless and absolutely uninspiring industry right now because they are settling for less and they're stuck at job positions because it provides good money. But honestly, they don't belong there. I... You know, my views are a little bit controversial about the industry. You know, is there money? Yes. Should you go there for the money? No. Usually money is the side effect of you being super awesome and really good at this one thing that you do, but shouldn't be the main motivator, right? You are at the position that you are at because they value who you are, what you can offer, right? And you are where you need to be at that moment. And then the moment you feel that's not your thing, yes, you might keep the job around for monetization or I mean money purposes, but at the same time, you need to find a new path, a new step forward. So again, know yourself and then always self reflect and ask this one question. Is this me? Right? Is it tickle my soul? Do I like it? If yes, and it's exciting and awesome. Cool. Continue. The moment you feel that something is wrong, like for example, with me, it was this. I was tired of doing polished illustrations because it was it just felt wrong. Uh, it's not because I was lazy. It's not. It just it didn't resonate anymore. There was something lacking. So then what I did is I was like, okay, next step. And then again, all my knowledge comes from YouTube. I never studied, never went to school, nothing like that. And then I discovered, you know, um, you know, films and scripts and, and then animation, 2D animation. And then everything started to make sense over time because I like this thing and I like this thing, and I like music and I like philosophy and I like this, this, this. And then slowly started coming together. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I should start my own animation project because I tested all those things out, environment art, characters, color keys, you know. Uh, and then I really liked teaching too because when I was teaching, it's probably because I was born in a, into a family of a, of a church going uh, family. And my, my dad is actually is a pastor at the church. So maybe some, some, somehow it translated to me, but I have, you know, I have a need to bring value to people. And then that bring, br brought me to here, which is what, which is an art school. And that is based around my animation project. So see if, we, if I was too logical in the beginning, I don't think I would ever come up with that. I'll do a YouTube channel with all you awesome Vikings here. And now I'll base it around my animation project. Your path is very whiny. Like sometimes, you know, I envy those people who know what they want just from the start, right? <clears throat> and that's cool, you know, very narrow, very, you know, shooting right into the sky. But in my experience, if you're honest with yourself, yes, your role might be very whiny, but at the end, when you're going to be looking back, all that experience that you gained from your life and then other jobs even, right? They all make sem sense if you answer your question of and self-reflect that am I doing the right thing? They all add up at, at, at the end when you're 
again, I'm not standing at the top of the mountain right now because the mountain is continuously growing year to year and your goals grow. But when I'm looking and self-reflecting, color scripting makes sense, environment makes sense, you know, visual development makes sense, music, I play in a music band, makes sense. You know, obsession with films and animation makes sense now. Why? Well, because I want to do it myself. And as a good director, you should be a combination of those things. So I joined everything together by being honest with myself and self-reflective. So yeah, this all comes under the umbrella of know yourself because this will guide you on an epic adventure, right? First, and secondly, you will never feel that you're doing something pointlessly. What you're going to be doing is like, I'm not sure where I'm going for sure, but I'm pretty sure that this makes sense for now because I think it will pay off in the long run. We never have answers for everything. And some people think that unknown is scary and horrible, but I'm gonna tell you this, this is the part of the artistic life or the artistic battle. The unknown is good because it doesn't make sense if we're gonna know everything. And you need to, you need, you need to leave space for, again, for discovery and understanding what your, where your adventure is gonna lead you, right? And then second, after a few years of you know, slowly discovering what you are, you're gonna encounter many, many things. One of them is gonna be lack of motivation, And then you're gonna have procrastination. And procrastination is a whole nother thing than lack of motivation because we procrastinate super productively, right? And I'll explain why. So procrastination. Sorry guys, for this is misspelled. And then we have, and then everything else leads to burnout. So let's cover all those topics one, one, one by one. So. We're gonna dive into different ways of how to motivate ourselves with an interesting concept I called every artist is a rocket. And we're gonna leave it for a little bit later down the lecture, right? But let's just talk about motivation in general. I'm gonna tell you this, you have a lot of motivation early on because there's a lot of things involved, which is like money, prestige, you get your subscribers, you get everything else. And that can motivate you, right? You hate your day job or something like that. But I think that motivation should never come from the outside. I think it always has to come from the inside. So one thing that helped me to push through my entire career was is, is a dream. You know, a dream of creating something awesome, to, you know, telling stories and, you know, just being fascinated. So main thing is that you need to understand because a lot of people say, oh, I paint and it sucks and they self bash and it's horrible. One second coffee. Right. And then and then they say, you know, I'll never be good enough. I'm like, guys, are you crazy? Why? Well, because again, everything in your career is going to come as a side effect for things that you love. Because if you love what you're doing and you're enjoying the process, it creates an amazing future, an enjoyable presence, and a very nostalgic and awesome past. Because if you are horrible at art and you still love it, it doesn't matter, guys. Because another thing that I want you to, to kind of understand that motivation comes and goes, and that's when discipline comes in. So if you are an undisciplined person, we're going to talk about a few things that will help you with your discipline. But first thing that gives you motivation, or you shouldn't even need motivation, you just need inspiration. And inspiration also comes and goes. And that's when we're just sitting here with your bum bum from your computer. It really helps. But sometimes even that doesn't help. And what do we do? So for example, for me, when I'm going through my art career, I always remind myself, I have a list of things, why I do the things that I'm doing. So for the most part, you know, why am I doing, let's say, art in general? Well, because art for me is like breathing. There's so many ideas in my brain that I always need to put it in a visual form. That's first. Secondly, I want to touch people's hearts 
with my art form. Three, I want to also deliver a message through my animation shorts and everything else. And everything else, like freelance, like, you know, struggles with money, it's justifiable suffering for the greater good and for what I love doing. So the thing is, if you don't remind yourself of what you're motivated by or why you're doing the thing that you're doing, suffering is pointless and life should be problems that we want to solve. It's not always like that, but you have to justify to your brain why you're doing the thing that you're doing and why it causes so much, so much pain, right? Because that's when procrastination comes in. Because motivation and procrastination or inspiration and procrastination, it's, 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 the, it's the same thing. And procrastination usually comes when there's lack of direction. Why? Well, because our brain needs to simulate productivity and we start like wobbling around, you know, watching YouTube videos, playing 10 hour game, 10 hours game sessions on a losing streak in like Dota 2 or Overwatch, right? Because I was always fascinated with motivation and procrastination and why they acquire. And the main question for me was we procrastinate very productively, right? We can have a headache. We can be... You know, we can be sick to our stomach, but we'll still sit in front of a computer and we'll just be like, you know, doing the thing. Why? Because our brain, especially creative brain, and then I'm not going to be covering ADHD. That's a whole another thing. I think a lot of creative people have it. I might have it. I don't really have an official, you know, uh, you know, diagnosis, but a lot of creative people come to the creative industry because they have an unstoppable brain i call it the wandering brain you have so many ideas so many everything you need to always keep yourself occupied and then also we have this very toxic i would say you know grind mode grind mode grind mode and people are just killing themselves over basically nothing why i don't know like it makes sense if you love what you're doing and you overwork yourself sometimes that sometimes is good but again balance is always good right but the thing is with procrastination usually we procrastinate not because we don't want to work and we don't want to paint but because we lack direction and the things that we're doing is unjustified pain to our brain and what's the thing that we procrastinate on most right youtube you know video games for other people, it's different things, right? For me, mostly it's YouTube and video games. Why do we? Why are we so good at procrastination? Well, I'm gonna tell you this: in games, of course, there's systems and stuff like that, but there's reward systems and there's a clear goal. So in Dota 2, for example, right, you need to destroy an enemy throne. It's like League of Legends, right? If you destroy their throne, you win. If you destroy their throne, you win. Clear goal. You flash a creep, gold, dopamine hit. You, you do a headshot, dopamine hit, right? The goal is clear and if we're tired and horrible at it, like, you know, I'm horrible at shooters, but I love them. You know, like yesterday I was in a really bad mood for some reason, I don't know why. I think I sat in front of Overwatch for like 10 hours straight and nothing was really satisfying in that thing, but I still did it. Why? Well, because distraction, destruction, is easy creativity is hard to do nothing and procrastinate all we have to do is complete other people's tasks clear set tasks and get rewarded for it and then when we need to think for ourselves and have motivation and inspiration right often than not we don't have a clear goal in mind and when we don't have a clear goal in mind that's when procrastination acquire uh, creeps in right you procrastinated not because you're lazy you're procrastinating not because you're a bad person you're procrastinating because you cannot justify the thing that you're doing to your brain you cannot justify the suffering that are going to your brain and your obligation is to self-reflect and see why you're doing this anyways you have to get excited about it you have to justify it again for yourself why you should continue doing it so for me when i get you know, procrastination streaks. And we're going to talk about procrastination as a form of creativity. That's another thing. Procrastination is not always bad. Some people use procrastination to create, and we're going to talk about it a little bit later. So for the most part, again, procrastination occurs, acquires, or occurs, 
appears uh, out of nowhere. <sighs> uh, when there's no clear goal in mind and your brain is suffering for no reason. So what you need to do, you need to remind yourself again and again and again. What you guys probably don't understand is that motivation is a, is a thought process in your brain and inspiration is a thought process in your brain. You constantly need to remind yourself why you're doing it, why you love it. And that's why, for example, I like teaching. Because when I teach and talk to somebody, I remind myself of those things. So I do them. For you, if you don't have anyone to teach or remind yourself through, what you can do is you can write things down and then every morning you say, why am I doing this? And why am I loving what I'm loving and what I like about it? Right? Because the thing is, perspective shifts are amazing. You can frame something in a way that it's almost pleasurable. You know, there's, what's that, Geckleberry Finn uh, in uh, Tom Sawyer? A story. Remember when Tom Sawyer was tasked with um, painting a um, what is it called? A fence, and he was like standing there with a brush, and then he was enjoying it so much that all the kids around him was like, "Hey, can I do that too, please?" And then he started charging them money, and it was a clever trick because what he did, the only thing that he did is he changed the perspective and the framing. For other people's brains and then in their brain what they were doing which is you know painting a uh a fence was a pleasurable activity so that's why you need to understand how your brain works you need to understand what motivates it what demotivates it and for the most part it's lack of the lack of plan so for the most thing for motivation you need a plan first a plan that tricks your heart and soul that justifies it and really you know really resonates with you because of without the heart everything doesn't make sense you know what if you want to make money in this industry go you know invest into stocks save up some money you know uh invest into real estate and then 50 years later you retire right so first thing you need to trick your heart and then you need to trick your brain right and then you, then you need to plan that the heart and the brain really agree with so for example my plan is well i want to make an education thing and i want to sometimes quit freelance i want to do my animation project why because i can work with people that i love and then it's going to be like lord of the rings it's going to be like maybe if it's not going to be like lord of the rings i i want to you know self-tricking or self-belief or what it, you don't have to tell it to other people so you, they don't think that you are some kind of a, you know ego maniac or something like that. And what you need to do is right. You need you need to you, you need to trick, not to trick, but convince your case before your brain and for your heart to understand. You need to to push further. And I'm sorry, guys. I cannot react to your. Awesome. Thanks. And we got a few uh, first donation on the channel. Thank you, Andy, so much. Um, yeah, but procrastination, right? Again, creativity. You have to understand, guys, we're warriors. And there's such a thing as, you know, some people call it the devil. Some people call it the resistance. I call it the devil. You know, I'm a man of faith. You know, I say this. A anything creative and awesome, constructive is, you know, from the creator, from God, I guess. You know, and then everything else is, you know, it's destructive. It's the opposite of that. If, if you are a creator, you know, you're trying to create something beautiful and worthwhile, and you also want to touch people's hearts, there's going to be a lot of things against you, right? Uh, Charles Bukowski, or there's, there's a cool video I'm going to link in the description. It's called the uh, Turning Pro, uh, and it's about... You know that inspiration is not always there and there's resistance so every time we create anything it's it's a war it's a battle it's it's something to fight for because for us not to create you have to do nothing to create something it takes effort so even if you're drawing and drawing poorly and if you're painting but you're moving forward and you're doing something that is already i think a big accomplishment because a lot of people live their life like that. They stare into TV, they go to a 9 to 5 job, and then they don't do anything above that. So I don't want to put us as on a pedestal, 
right? But artist's job is actually pretty, pretty hard because we're creating something out of nothing and then we're putting it through our brain, through our soul and then putting all ourselves in it. And then that's when it leads to lots of stress, overwork. And let's say you tricked your mind and you convinced your heart that the goal that you're pursuing is worth it. You know who you are and it resonates with you and every step makes sense. You know, I'm studying film, not because I want to be a filmmaker, but because it makes sense. Okay, I've learned everything that I wanted to. Oh, next step makes sense. Let's say I become a storyboard artist. Wow, okay, cool. What about next? Maybe I'm a story artist. You know what? All this is awesome, but something is lacking. And you discover you're a script artist, right? So the, you know, the whiny path to who we are is very long, but it's worthwhile because it's very satisfying. Is it going to be easy? No. But another thing that you guys have to understand, a lot of you guys think that comfort is good. You know, money is good. Everything is good. But I can tell you, I experienced my life in, I would say, I would say extreme poverty, but we were, you know, we were not very wealthy with our parents. Sometimes it was just potatoes for an entire month, right? I had to work in McDonald's to provide for food when I was in high school. I experienced that. Was I suffering? No. Why? Well, because there was always good outlook on life and good juju throughout my family. You know, probably because we were, you know, we were guided by faith, I guess. Right. And then we were always focusing on what was something that we could change, something that we could, you know, <sighs> something that was in front of us. And then whatever was in, 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 in front of us or it was in the past, we weren't thinking about that. We we're just thinking about right here, right now. And discomfort always provided creative thinking. It provided a motivation to strive and hope for something and motivation to actually accomplish something. Because if you stop at, start at the bottom, you can go further. And let's say a lot of people of you think that you are at the disadvantage. I know we have a lot of people from third world countries and you're starting like at the bottom of the bottoms. But the thing is, if you're born in the hell and then at some point you start raising up, things just get easier for you. And you have a lot of inner juju to go forward, All right? So, what I say is discomfort is great because let's say if you have a, if you have like, again, I'm going to compare this to, this is not somebody, this is just an understanding of the industry of me. I know a lot of people who have like Cintiqs and lots of money around them, good internet, stable food, parents take care of them, they live like in a nice apartment in America. They have all the things to kickstart their career, but then they accomplish nothing. Why? Well, because they don't have the motivation, the fight in them that they accumulated through hardships and discomfort. And it's really hard for them to push forward because their life is so comfortable right now. Then why ever leave it? Leave it, right? There's very rarely when I see an interview of a professional artist who was like, you know, my great, my, my life was great. I was born in like a million dollar house, everything. Because the thing is, Art is always something painful. And then when we avoid the pain, we need to, you know, make out of something ugly and horrible, something beautiful, right? So all of you guys out there who think that you are the disadvantage, you have a horrible tablet, a computer or anything else, those are all solvable things. But the fight against the discomfort and being motivated, even everything when everything is bad, if you find who you are, you find your motivation, and then you fight your procrastination by knowing and tricking your heart and brain why you do it in the first place, you will skyrocket in an industry. Because the thing is, the most hard thing to acquire, and sorry, this is getting a little bit out of hand, because the most hard thing to acquire is actually, you know, heart skin, and then the muscles and the willpower. Because I'm gonna tell you this, if a low willpower person is gonna acquire something, they either need to get those qualities or they will then fail. If, for example, you know, I don't like to shit talk anybody, but you know, everyone saw that horrible, horrible 
interview of a girl that quit Disney. I wanted just to go, why are you doing this, right? It's, it's the same thing. People with no backbone, people with no, with no history, with no pain behind them. Because the thing is, an artist always needs to have something to say. And usually you have things to say when your life is hard. And you know, suffering is not good. But the thing is, we as artists, we understand suffering of the world and everything else on a whole another level, right? On a whole another level. And if we are suffering, not in terms of like, oh, it's, blah, 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 it's horrible, but you, you know, you understand the injustice, you understand this or that. So I'm going a little bit philosophical, but this is really important for me to tell you because this is my truth, right? Artists who knows what hardship is, have perspective on life, what it is to, you know, not have bread, not have money, not have this or that. They have more things to say and have more motivation to, to push through. And another thing is they become very stoic. Right, because what they do is they like well, and it's another thing is you have to be very stoic as a, as an artist, and then the mentality of stoicism is very interesting. I, I I position myself as a Christian stoic, which is you know uh, I look is what's in front of me, things that I cannot affect, I don't touch them and I don't worry about them. Like for example, a good mentality of a healthy artist is this: first of all, you're a professional. You're a professional even if you suck at art because professional mentality is not your soft skills. I mean, yeah, it's not your it's not your hard skills, which is painting, photoshopping, tosai, all that stuff, right? It's your soft skills. It's your ability to discipline yourself, to motivate yourself, to know who you are. Because if you have a professional mentality, right, you're going to be working and basically paying yourself nothing. If I give myself $5... I'll gain nothing from that, right? But the thing is, if you have a professional mentality right now, if you have it right now, when job comes to you, nothing's gonna change in your life. And another thing that you, going back to the stoicism thing, what you need to understand is, you need to focus as a healthy artist on things that you can change, on things that is in your power. And things that are ahead of you or past you, you just, you know, you don't give a crap about it, right? You're just focusing on things that you can change. Like, for example, you have a crappy computer and you don't have a tablet. You have a piece of paper, you have a pen. You can steal it in Ikea if you want to and practice your fundamentals on free Wi-Fi on the library on crappy piece of papers, okay? You can do that. Okay, what else can you do? You can go to McDonald's, save up some money, buy a crappy tablet secondhand and a crappy laptop. That's a start, right? Then what can you change? Well, I cannot upgrade it right now because I don't have money. And you always go through this thing, but you always say, I'm a professional. I'm a professional with a brick. I'm a professional with a piece of paper and a napkin. I'm a professional with a laptop because I'm telling you guys, if you're gonna give me a piece of paper, and something else, I can do something with a piece of paper. If you give me a laptop that is crappy, I'm pretty sure I can do something with that. Good technology, good opportunities, everything else will come as a nice side effect of you loving what you're doing and then only paying attention to things that you can change. And then that can lead you, like for example, I started with no tablet, with no nothing. Then I had a super like Toshiba laptop that had like two gigs of RAM. I don't remember how many it was and then an old bamboo. I had to reinstall. And then the thing is, I, I, I didn't have a paid version of Paint Tool Sai. So what I had to do to save my pictures, I had to do screenshots of my screen and save it as like this or not ever close my files, which was impossible with two gigabytes of RAM, right? Uh, so yeah, so now back to the stoicism. Right. I am a pro, but in the making. My goals are clear, right? Are clear. They ticker they tickle my heart, soul, and brain, and it's justifiable pain that I'm going through. And I'm focusing on only things that I can change and then things that I cannot change, I will not worry about it. Why? 
Because why worry about things that are out of your com control? Because what happens is when you worry about things that are out of your control is you have a horrible future that you're afraid of. You don't ever live in the present because your present does nothing because you live in the future. And then it creates a horrible past because you did nothing in the present and then became the past, right? So for example, in my life, um, I remember there was one time that uh, I quit my day job and um, Joe gave me my first freelance job. But then my wife got, you know, some kind of kidney problems. Then we had to travel back to Russia for medical uh, things. And then and because in America, there's no way we're treating that. And then our car broke down and then the, the motor died. And then because it was running <laughs> low on oil. And then we basically had enough money to go to Russia. And then basically, you know, there was no money left. And I think we didn't even have money for tickets. And then we had rent inspire, expiring. So either could freak out or it can be sit down. And this is the thing that I always do to remind myself. I, I do a victory plan. And I think, what are the things that I can do right now to change this problem or this problem? Or for you guys is to achieve my goal. You know, if something sucks and something is horribly wrong and everything is not going to according to the plan, you have to, you know, you have to treat it as it's the new normal, right? Because if you are treating horribly things that are gone wrong as a challenge, as things to overcome, you'll be always ready for it. So that's, I always say, hey guys, you know, go and research stoicism. It's a very nice philosophy. The only thing that it lacks is hope. So that's why I'm combining stoicism and Christianity. Because for Christianity, it's like, for me, life is death. Uh, no, no. <laughs> for me, life, uh, I think life, life is God, and life is Jesus, and uh, death is gain. Uh, to translate it to normal, uh, not Jesus freak <laughs> language is, I, you know, my life, it is what it is, and my life is pursuit of hard things, right? And if something goes wrong, it goes wrong. I overcome it, right? And another thing is that when hard things happen to you because you're going to have so many horrible things on your way. And I like to make a metaphor. And that metaphor is you're sitting in the car and this car is going to an imaginary house long, long way from you, right? And it's in the middle of the dark. Your art path is something like this because our art goal as we said from the top of the mountains right um, you know our art goals always change for me this was freelance at, at the beginning now it's lumber saga maybe later on I mean, this is like you guys but how for artists right but then the only thing that you can see and you should see is 30 meters ahead of you because your life is like you are in a car and then the lights are shining in front of you. The only thing that you should see is 30 meters ahead and then you should adjust your, your, your path. So you have a little hole over here, for example, you go past it, right? You have a deer, you know, you break a little bit uh, in front of it. But the thing is, a lot of us, what we do is we drive like this. We drive with fear in mind that somewhere in front of us, there is a deer and we're afraid to hit it. And because we are looking somewhere past us so far away, we don't notice the little hiccups or opportunities even along the way. And then we get in the ditch here. We drive off the, off the road here because we're too, we're just daydreaming too, too much in the future. And what you need to do is you need to embrace the present and all of the challenges that you have in the present, tackle them. And whatever challenge is going to be ahead, don't worry about them right now, right? Just be happy in the present. See what you can do right now. Keep this in mind as an imaginary thing. And maybe you might think like there might be a deer down the road that I might hit, right? But for the most part, you're sitting in the car in the present. And you, the only thing that you can see is 30 meters ahead of you. So if you cannot predict what's going to be here. Why worry about it? 
So a lot of you guys are gonna be like, if I ever gonna get a job, if I even gonna be successful, you're gonna get a hundred subscribers, a thousand subscribers, or anything like that, or whatever. Those are pointless questions that will never help you achieve what you want to to achieve, right? The healthy, you know, mentality is this. Again, we're gonna repeat ourselves. You know who you are. You know, whoops. Uh, you know who you are first. Let's just clean it up know who you are you are going through justifiable pain that gives you motivation right because if if the pain is justifiable and you are you made your case for your heart and your brain it's easier to do because you are so excited about what you love that the pain is good and it's worth it right and then next right is a pro mentality i am a pro i am a pro but in the making i have no control you have no control over things that are out of your control so I'm focusing on the present. So I have a victory plan. And I'm focusing on the present. 30 meters ahead of me. You're not thinking about how long your journey is. You have no idea if it's 1000 kilometers, if it's for 40,000 kilometers or is it two meters away. All you can do is just one step forward, one 30 minute forward in digestible chunks because if you're gonna be focusing too many you know too often on things that are way out there you're not gonna do correct decisions on your steering wheel of your car right someone says we're gonna merge on a unicorn this is a unicorn i didn't manage but yeah uh yeah so this is the mentality that i usually kind of try to have in my brain, right? Now, this is all great and all, right? But procrastination still acquires or the resistance, procrastination. And I want to make case, I want to play devil's advocate for procrastination. That is no, it's not always bad. Sometimes it's very good. For example, we, we kind of establish that procrastination usually occurs or appears when there's lack of direction. So our ADHD brains that need to be preoccupied and being bombarded with information needs a thing to do. Because first of all, some people say that we need to be motivated by people outside uh, because people say, well, if you're not working, you're not grinding, you're less, right? Some are just doing it because they're addicted or is it too hard? right or again the pain is not justifiable again lack of direction leads to procrastination but i gotta tell you this your brain works in mysterious ways for example that's why it's understand it's really important to understand and be mindful of what you think every day and who you are and how you work so for example for me because i know how my brain works I know that procrastination is a crucial part of my creative process. Why? Because during procrastination, my brain is actually processing things in the back of my mind. And I need to, I cannot think on a thing like this. Like I have a target, you know, and I look at it until my brain bleeds. My, wor my brain doesn't work this way. My brain needs to go wander around, play some games, watch a YouTube, go to the shower, go on a walk. My brain needs to be occupied with something else because there's so much going on that there's no way that I can do it consciously right here, right now. So for example, procrastination, a lot of the times, a lot of the times for me is a creative part of the process because it relaxes, relaxes my brain. And then when I come back, problem is solved for the most part. 
And another thing is guys, I'm going to give you this concept in this chat, right? In this chat, there's two types of people. One is, I call them the marathon runners. And one is heavy lifters. Right? Let's say 50 kilograms or let's say 100 kilograms. And the reason why I have them equal is because it's important. You're like, what the hell are you talking about, Misha? Why is it related? What, what are you talking about? I'm going to explain. So, you all know people who are just, you know, they're like a clock. You know, they work and they work and they work. They go on a little break. They go back and they work and they work and they work and then they're done after 40 hours, for example, on a painting, right? And they worked every, and they did everything gradually within the 40 hours time frame, right? And then we have, so nice chunks of things, you know, they're, they're really good of just doing this. But then there's heavy lifters. And you know how heavy lifters work? <laughs> They do, they do nothing. They do nothing like here. So they do this and maybe they do this and then they do absolutely nothing. And then they go, or they go like this, right? Up, only up. So what they do is they, they go around the task, they go around the task and they go, and they just lift it up in one thing. I'm a heavy lifter, not in real life, as you can see, but mentality wise, I, First of all, download, download the imagery and the idea and what I need to do into my brain. And then I go procrastinate and then I paint a little bit and then I go procrastinate and then I paint a little bit and then I go procrastinate and then I'm like, enough. And then I go and I do the entire painting in like five to 10 hours. Right. And the thing is, you have to understand who you are one of those times. Right. Some of you guys are this. Some of them are combination because like, for example, all of us are heavy lifters when we have a deadline. All right. We just go, go. Right. But then I, I wish I could be this for this chunk of my freelance work, for example. Right. But I can't because that's not how my brain works. Should I try to fight it? I tried. Honestly, I worked with Pomodoro techniques, everything else. I went on a procrastination streak for like a week and done nothing and then did the same amount of work in three days, right? When I was productive as a marathon runner, right? So again, there's no, like, this is not bad because the thing is it took him 40 hours to do this. And the thing is it took, let's say this guy to do 40 hours too. But the thing is for, let's say 26 hours, this guy procrastinated. And then for 26 hours, there was no procrastination here. Why? Procrastination is part of the process. I'm not trying to justify you gaming and being like, oh, I just, I'm just a heavy lifter. But if you work this way, that's just how it, this is just how my brain works, for example, right? I would, it's not that I'll be not working. I'll be, I'll have a, you know, I'll have a document, Photoshop document in front of me. You know, I'll, I'll separate everything into layers. Maybe I'll just block in some local colors and then I'll write a few sentences of what the colors is going to be. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to step away and I'm going to not trick myself into productivity because I know it's pointless. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step away, go watch YouTube, play some Overwatch. And in the last three hours of my work day, I will do everything that the marathon, out, uh, marathon runner would done in eight. Because the thing is, uh, and I think that's something to deal with ADHD maybe, uh, or, or, you know, just how my brain works. I can hyper-focus and do a lot of things in short bursts of time versus long periods of time. Like I just die when I do eight hour days and I just, it's called, it's called, you're just drooling over the keyboard and you just, you know, you, you're just doing a line across the thing or you're rendering like one pixel for like five hours. Why trick yourself? Right? Why trick yourself if you can just not do it and then just work for three hours intensely? So that's another thing. Again, see, it goes, goes back to the first thing. 
You need to know yourself to understand how to be productive, to understand how you work and how your brain works, how your body works and everything else. Another thing is that it might be helpful to some people. I'd say, again, uh, everything has to, and again, I'm not a doctor and all this is just my own experience. Don't, you know, look at it with a grain of salt. Um, I think that a lot of creative people need a lot of dopamine in their brain. They need stimulation. I think it's called, I think dopamine deficiency or something. Our brain basically always runs on low frequencies. And it doesn't mean that it's not overstimulated. That means it needs more dopamine and it searches for it everywhere to keep it preoccupied. That's why, for example, my brain works like this. I have layers. On the first layer, there's maybe like, you know, Britney Spears singing. On the second layer, there's my cringy moment of me talking uh, about something at school and then embarrassing myself, right? Over here, I have, you know, Lumber Saga and here I'm crying on my own grave and, and wondering if my family will miss me, you know? So this is how my brain works. And I think it is pretty good sign of ADHD. But the thing is, it can be combated. Why? Because the thing is, a lot of creative people think like this on multiple levels, right? On multiple levels. And, and by the way, guys, it's uh, this last thought. It's, it's not a bad juju thought. It's just, a, it's just, you know, it's me. <laughs> you know, it's nice to reminisce about death, not in a bad way, because you get yourself a sense that life is precious. So that's why a lot of philosophers thought about death a lot of the times, because if you think about death and your life is, you know, it's going to end at some point. It's a good reminder to spend your present on something worthwhile. Uh, yeah. So as you can see here, we think in layers I, and I call it the wandering mind. So we're sorry, we're going into a little bit into in depth how my brain works, but I think this is going to help a lot of you people because this is a mentality of a healthy artist that understand how their brain works. So I'm using myself as an example. Um, yeah. So for example, here I call it the wandering brain. And for example, people who are not affected by ADHD, I call it just an artistic brain. I don't like calling it ADHD brain, so I call it artistic brain. So for, for example, for me, it's not hard to go on multiple levels and think about multiple ideas at the same time. What is hard for me is go on the first level and bring it to the top and then think about it, right? But this level of thinking is really good when you are a heavy lifter, why? Well, you download onto your subconscious a bunch of things and then it works in the background while you are doing something stupid on the first layer of thought, for example, right? But then you need to go into laser focus mode of your brain. And I think marathon runners have a better understanding of it. Why? And for example, I know a lot of artists who are, they needed to get a task that is very clear and they do not they have a hard time to create to create something super weird and super outrageous and then people who are heavy lifters and a lot of script writers story writers cinematographer artists had artistic brain or some people call it ADHD brain when there's multiple layers at the same time it was just really hard for him them to live in the present because there's so many things going on at the same time they get like I call it third person syndrome it's almost like you are looking at your eye from a third person. And the only thing that you've seen is just this endless void of layers of thoughts. Sorry, we're kind of going too in depth into it, but it's very fascinating for me because I think, you know, if it helps somebody, that'll be great. So wandering brain is really good at heavy lifting and then coming up with ideas, right? But then sometimes we lack the laser focus and that's when we need to practice it, right? We need to practice of just sitting down and doing it and then usually every person, you know, and this is a little bit productivity hacks to you. Uh, we did call the lecture mental health, <laughs> motivation, productivity and burnout. So for you to get the wandering brain, for most artistic people, this is not hard to do the wandering brain. We we'll always come up with ideas. But then what is hard is to organize them, bring it onto first layer and then sit down, sit with your bum bum and then start drawing. And that comes with practice and discipline. So for example, for me to uh, focus discipline, I try to wake up at the same time. I go to the cold shower. 
cold shower is actually very beneficial to people who are heavy lifters or the wandering brain. Why? Because when you're under cold water, all those layers, they disappear. You're not thinking about anything. The only thing that you're thinking about is like you're very cold and you're right here. You're in the present. That's why I like doing cold showers. Another thing is that's when a lot of artistic people or I say very sad people who are need support uh, cut themselves here and there. Again, if you if you're thinking about those things, it's probably because your brain is so out there. You need to experience a little bit of pain or some kind of sensation to get yourself in the present. Uh, I remember when I was a child, I would do it with my with a nail on my knee, not because I was you know thinking messed up things, but probably because of that. You know, uh, my you know my school of thought is I'm just observing how. I think what is happening and coming with conclusion. And that was my conclusion. If it can be backed up by science, cool. If not, I don't know, it helps me. If it helps you, cool. So laser focus, again, cold shower, waking up at the same time, right? And then you set up a timer. I like setting up a timer and tricking my brain for let's say one hour or 30 minutes or five minutes, for example, because every artist has, I call it wind up time. And when you are sitting in front of your computer, you can have 15 minutes um, of wine up time. You can have two hours, you know, for different people. For me, it's about 15 to 20 minutes. I need to just start drawing, getting in the flow state. And then, for example, streaming really helps me. Uh, so, for example, and the thing is, if you have a timer in front of you, like, can I, I've only been sitting for five minutes. Let me go for another five minutes. So, another thing is having a timer just ticking in front of you. It's a very nice thing for people who are struggling with procrastination just to see the time go by. They get reminded all the time. So for me, the wind up time is like, yeah, five to 15 minutes. And after that, I'm in flow state. And then if it gets interrupted, I have to go and sit for five to 15 minutes again to pick up where I was. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a very nice feeling when everything kind of flows under your your pen and you're just doing and then you're just making a mistake correcting them again and again and again uh another thing that really helps some people is you're doing the pomodoro techniques you know but i i did it like this i did 25 5 25 5 and i did like eight of them in a row and multiply by eight why because for 25 minutes i would paint but then for five minutes i will be thinking about painting but not letting myself paint and because my dopamine overcharged brain needs satisfaction, my brain is like, ooh, I cannot paint? Okay. And then what happens, I would even start painting sometimes, like around four minutes. I would not wait the whole break because my brain wants to paint. And then I only get 25 minutes to paint, whatever I planned on those things. And then I go forward like this for eight times and I take a huge break for an hour and a half or maybe take a break sometimes. Um, did I merge everything? No, I didn't. Yeah, so that's another thing that tricks my brain into, uh, you know, to battle procrastination. Um, but again, sometimes I'm just honest with myself. Can I push forward? Am I healthy enough? Uh, am I, you know, is my mind healthy enough to push forward? If not, go take a break. See, that's the thing. You have to be, you have to be always observing yourself almost like from a third person. You know, like there's a camera on you and understand how you're feeling. What are your thoughts? Write those down, document them and, and be understanding of what's going on in your own brain. Because if you're not going to be understanding yourself, first of all, you won't be able to help anyone else. And for, and, and then you, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Like for example, how many of you know what thoughts did you think throughout the day? Right. How many negative? How many positive? Right. What thoughts did you leave in your brain to flourish? And how many did you say, no, I'm not going to think about it. So that's the thing. Um, a lot of artists are very unconscious about what's going on in their own brain. And you have to be looking on the inside a lot of the time. I know some people say it's egoistic to do that. But I think if you understand yourself better and what's going on in your brain, you can really, really uh, benefit from it. Because, for example, I have a lot of anger issues sometimes. And a lot of people probably uh, are surprised about it. But I'll say yesterday I was playing Sea of Thieves with, with my wife and I was raging like crazy, guys. I was, we got destroyed by this skeleton ship and it was an AI and I was so pissed. And 
I, I closed the game and it ruined my entire day. But the thing is, sometimes I catch myself on that. You know, I look my, at myself from a third view and I'm like, what emotions are you in, experiencing right now and why? And then you say, well, that's stupid, right? That's also, so that's again, comes to know yourself and self-reflection. All right, cool. So we, t- we talked about procrastination. Let's say you have all the things that we talked about. You know yourself, your heart and brain is in for the idea and the suffering is justified. You are a pro in the making and you have the victory plan. And then, you know, procrastination is not an issue for you because you have a good daily routine. You go, like, I really recommend going to the cold showers every day in the morning. It's going to, you know, transform your life. Um, you know, like, and then you are answering and paying attention only to the present going 30 meters ahead of you and the opposite can happen to you or even worse than procrastination burnout can happen because a lot of the time procrastination is an indicator that you are pushing too hard and you're going at too fast of a pace i burn out all of the time because again i'm a heavy lifter i usually like this 10 week course is exactly the thing um that is a, a good advocate of that. You know, I'm like, oh, what's the course is going to be? It's going to be two weeks. No, three, five, no, 10. Okay, let's do that, right? And I always overwork myself because, you know, if, if, if the challenge is not there, and again, that's part of my exercise of staying out of comfort zone. Because if you're in a comfort zone, you die. You die on every level, you know, mentally, spiritually, everywhere. If you're in a comfort zone, you know, you're not growing. So that's why, for example, cold showers is really good. Why? Because when you're under a cold shower every morning, you're under a warm shower and then you turn in this knob, practicing going into the comfort zone, un- going into not comfort zone, you know, and purposefully, you know, suffering through it. But the thing is, the interesting thing is, the hardest thing in a cold shower is actually is turning the knob to cold shower. When the cold shower is there, you just go, Whoa. it's awesome. And that's representative of us painting because the hardest thing is to start. The hardest thing is to actually just sit down and start painting. But then when the cold shower or actually painting is starting, it's not so bad, right? So that's why I really recommend going to cold showers or waking up at the same time or going to the gym, for example. It's, pro- it's, it's practicing willpower. But let's say you're doing all of those things and you're so passionate about what you're doing and then your final goal and then you work, 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 work. And you, and you, and you, you know, you're muscling through and you're muscling through and you just, as I say, you take your cross and then you, 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 you carry it. And then there's like a bunch of, you know, weights dragging after you, you know, and, uh, you know, you get tired at some point. Because you might push yourself too hard or you've been going for too long without stops. And that's why you need to understand what your pace is. You need to understand, like, honestly, I don't care if you remember we had a thing with the car. I don't care if you're going to because you are like a car. You have a gas tank and when you run out, you either explode or overheat or you go without radiator water and then you start smoking up. And then a lot of people keep going in a broken engine. But the thing is what you have to understand, the more you're going in a broken engine, for the same time, your car is going to be standing in one spot, fuming and flaming and being unrepairable. And usually you need to double the time that you were running on a broken engine. You're going to be like, for example, you were running on a broken engine for four hours but you're gonna stick in one place for like 16 hours to be able to replace this right so what you need to do is right you need to update your car with different parts your car cannot go for 100 miles all the time you agree you upgrade the new engine which is like your ability to sit in front of a photoshop file for two three four hours right start gradually like for example if if you start doing push-ups it's it's two push-ups, then five, then ten. You cannot start with fifty, right? Uh, if you have, you know, old tires that don't really go for like off-road road, you know, you have to go slow and then upgrade to those. And those are skills that we acquire as we go. But the thing is, burnout 
when you have it, it's already too late. There's no such a thing as, you know, um, like curing burnout. You cannot cure burnout. If it's acquired, you need to live through it. And then you have to take a break because when burnout is already there, it's too late to turn it back because you've been, you've been going on an empty tank. You've been, you know, I charge my phone to like 10% and then I discharge it. And then you charge it to 10% and you discharge it. And that's horrible for the battery. So for example, once I almost went like on a six month sabbatical for because for the last five years, I was so burned out. I still freelance, but it was horrible existence. And the reason why I went for six months were because for five years, I've been doing everything nonstop and I overworked myself. So burnout, if it's already there, that means it's too late. There's only, there's no such a thing, yeah, as when you have a burnout, not having it anymore. Those, you, you need to make a decision here to take a break. And for different people, different things, like different things recharge different people. I usually need to recharge on a spiritual level, like get some good juju in, I need to get some motivation in, and on a physical level. Like for example, I started going back to the rock gym and then physical activities is amazing. You, you would probably think that it's gonna discharge you. But the thing is your brain works so much and it's a muscle and then your body stays healthy, stays, uh, stays untired. So there's a dissonance in your body, in your brain because your brain works so hard and your, your body is just a mush of things sitting, right? And then your body is confused. I don't want to go sleep, but your brain is so tired. And also, like, honestly, brain tired is much worse than body tired. But then if you sync your watch with your brain and your body, then you go to sleep, you'll wake up much, much refreshed, right? So I really recommend, I'm going to go to the gym right after this lecture. Uh, yeah, so if you thinking about healthy artist mentality, a healthy artist has a healthy mind, and a healthy body. You cannot have a healthy mind and a pretty, you know, screwed up body. So I would say right now, if you're just starting out, a lot of people will are like, you know, they're full of health and awesome. Five years from now, if you continue grinding like now, you're gonna either get yourself in the hospital or you're gonna lose all this progress in the next five years after the five years grind because you're going to be so unproductive. It's ridiculous. You know, a lot of my artist friends who were grinding for the last five to six years started going to the gym because they started experiencing horrible neck pains, everything else. So yeah, a true Viking warrior with a healthy mind has a super cool, healthy body. Not physically appealing. That's a nice bonus. But you need to feel nice for your brain to function normal. And you know, it's a, it's such a relief when you do have a normal functioning body because a lot of the times I had low energy, low everything, even I was falling asleep under cold showers. But then when I went to physical activities, that absolutely helped me. Okay, so what else did I wanted to talk about today? Oh yeah. So yeah, to avoid burnout guys, you need to figure out your rhythm. And to figure out rhythm, you need to have a concept. I call it imaginary productive day. So, or ideal day, ideal day. You need to picture a day when you felt awesome, when you thought awesome, when you drew awesome and everything was awesome. And then you need to write it down and that's gonna be your baseline. It's your baseline. And what you need to do to avoid burnout you need to compare it to an ideal baseline day, productive day, and ask yourself, am I functioning on the same level? And if not, why, right? And now you can always keep your body in check. See, that's the thing. That's why self-reflection and knowing yourself is so important to avoid procrastination or burnout or anything else. It's because we stop take care and we stop caring for ourselves we stop we lose touch with ourselves with our thoughts and what we're doing in life and then it leads to us forgetting about our body about our mind and everything else and we have to take care of it and to, to take care of it like a good you know 
farmer, we need to attend our fields and groom them and fertilize it and all of that stuff, right? And whatever I'm teaching you right now, this is, um, you know, this is just mental tricks that I categorize with me. So for example, I have sketchbooks that I do random no notes in to remind myself of things. I do constant victory plans like Julie that is coming to Wyoming pretty soon with her husband visiting us. She knows like I went on a call with her even if it was like an airplane trip. I, I drew an airplane point A to point B because I always need to visualize things, explain things to myself, not about only like my career stuff, but also things about myself. What are you feeling me shit right now? Right, and why you're feeling this? What do you What do you want in life? Right? What What are the things that you're grateful for? Right? And all those things are constant reminder and keep you in the present. Because as artists, we always live in the future. We hate our past, and we never live in the present. But well, we need to change that. And again, it's me reminding you, and also me reminding myself. As an artist, I need to live in the present. You know, plan my life as I will live forever. Right, but live in the present like it's last. It's my last day, okay? And that's a good way on out, outlook on life, I think. So now to the fun part, motivation. We talked about it a little bit, but not too in depth. And this is, so if no one knows, I'm writing a book. It's called Love, Life and Death of Creativity. And in this book, there's a chapter and it's called Every Artist is a Rocket. And you're like, you're mad, Misha. What, what are you talking about? I'll explain. I'll explain what I'm talking about. So, every one of you is a rocket. I'm gonna draw a rocket. Hopefully it's gonna look good. Uh, so, a rocket has, you know, flaps, the main body. And I, this is, I'll call it the Misha rocket. So this is me inside, hello, right? Each and one of you are sitting in their rocket and everyone has different engines and for me, I have those engines. So overall, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six engines. I call it six engine rocket. You know, some people have more engines. So this is another engine here. You know what, let's call grade them so you can understand what I'm talking about. Let's have it, let's say reddish, something like this. So engine one, two, three, four, five, and then the big one is the sixth one. All right, let's just, have a little bit less here, boink, and the sixth one. So, what are they? And you know, this maybe we have more, but this is how my brain works. So, first engine or first pair of engines, I call it. So, this is internal and this is external, and I call it fear. And then on the right, we have internal and then external gratification or I call it at a boy at the girl you know or let's say graduate uh, gratification or dopamine let's let's just do I don't know how to speak gratification so okay let's let's pretend it's it's right so fear gratification this is uh, money or material and this I call the great quest or fight for an idea. You get the gist of it, you know, the great quest, you know, the epic adventure, the heart, right? So each of those engines, and you know what, let's have on a separate layer. Uh, each of those engines can be pointed in different directions. And those directions are very important, right? Why? For example, let's just explain what each engine does, okay? So fear, internal, I will die a nobody. I will, you know, I'll never make it. I'll never have this, you know, I'm horrible. I'll die a hobo with no work, you know, that's internal, external. Our parents saying, what, are, what the hell are you doing with your life? You want to be an artist? Go get a real job, right? Our director is going to hate me. You know, uh, the subscribers going to abandon me if I don't post something, right? Internal and external. Again, internal is coming from within us, external from, from outside. 
And the thing is, fear is a great motivator, but it's also a great demotivator, right? So right now, this engine, let's say it's fear, can be pointed in another direction. That's why I like to visualize everything. So for example, fear of I'm gonna die a nobody, for me, it's a great motivator. For some people, it's a great motivator and demotivator. And they'd be like, well, if I'm gonna die nobody, well, why, why try? It's too scary, right? I will die nobody, right? Again, the engine can be turned either in opposite way of the rocket and then maybe skew the direction of it a little bit, right? Or it can be going in the same direction. External fear. Our director is gonna hate me when I'm gonna give him my artwork. And you're gonna be all nervous and you, you, you know, you'll be all fearful. Or you're gonna be like, man, I'm super afraid of my art director. I need to impress them, so I need to push harder. So I see, again, two different examples of how fear goes this way or this way. So now what you have to understand is you can write down your fears, external, internal, and see if it's motivating you or demotivating you. And you can draw your own rocket with your own you inside and understand yourself better, right? So for example, external gratific gratification or at a boy, at a girl, internal, I'm good. That's awesome. I'm proud of myself for I, what I did and I should continue doing it because I painted today for two hours and maybe it was not as good as I wanted to, but I'm still proud of myself. And then that engine is either on or sometimes this engine can be bad. Why? Because you are too proud of yourself, you are too narcissistic, and actually your ego is actually pushing you down because you're not progressing for forward. All you're doing is you are giving yourself self uh, gratification for no reason. So it also can be either good or bad. Most artists have this. Most artists have this engine completely off. They never say they're good. They never are proud of what they do. They're always self-bashing and they are like controlled by fear. And then there's external ones. So external, what, what that could be? External gratification. You get, you know, a hundred subscribers on Instagram. You get a like on Instagram for your photo. You know, you get an art station, you know, you get plus a thousand followers on art station, for example, right? But this sucks. Why? When you don't get this, what happens to the engine? It dies off. It's not there anymore. Or even worse, when you don't get any of this, your engine, what does it do? It turns the other way. My post sucked. I didn't get my internal gratification because no one liked my post, right? So now ship is going in circles, right? You guys are right. And then you're just gonna be self-centered on this Instagram post and you cannot move forward until you get it. All right, material is pretty good. It, it can be combined with fear, right? But material is like, I want prestige. You know, I said it's bad, but you know, some people have as a really strong motivator. Money, status, studio, it could be anything. So I call it materialistic. Of course, some of them can be in gratification, some of them can be in fear, but for me personally, because that's my brain, this is a whole nother engine. You may, you can compile your rocket of different engines as you please. And then the last one, this one is the most important one, the great quest or fight for an idea, right? The great battle, I want to call it. Yeah, the great battle. It's, it's something that keeps you pushing even if all of the engines are not working. So for example, for me, I'm a storyteller. I will die without art. I will die without lumber. So I won't die, but you know, it'll be, it will suck. You know, I'll die without this or that. And you know, I need through my art to try to tell stories and change people's hearts. And then I want to do it through my art, you know, and it's a thing. It's a, it's a dream. It's like a un, you know, unreasonable, sometimes crazy thought that is in it. It's like, you know, with, I have a dream, you know, and then you have a dream. It's something doesn't, doesn't need to make sense. It's just always there as a motor. And then I think everyone should find their great quest or fight for an idea because you know, it's like hope. Remember the Sandman, hope dies last. And then that's your hope. That's your 
idea of what you want to accomplish it doesn't need to make sense it's just your heart needs to believe in it and then your brain needs to believe in it and then this engine should be always on you are lacking a lot of things if you don't have this engine and i call this engine of self-understanding you know or why you're doing it the philosophical you know way of approaching art why you do art in the first place and that's the thing and if you don't have any of those engines you still have power to go forward right so for example another thing that i want to talk about right is what is a good combination of your engines right i'm gonna tell you this external engines we have no control over them, just like in Stoic philosophy. We have no control over exterior for gradu uh, gratification or fear, right? Because, for example, if someone else says, if you don't do this for me, you will get fired and trying to get fear onto us, we can either use it as a propeller or we, we can be like, you know what, this doesn't work on me at all because what I'm saying is everything in terms of motivation as your core engines, it should be your great quest engine for the greater good, you know, and it should be your internal fear and then your internal gratification. Because the thing is, subscribers come and go, you have no control over it. External fears, for the most part, you have no control over them, right? Besides just ignoring them, right? But internal fears and internal gratifications you can be your own cheerleader and say, good job, I'm proud of you. You did a good thing, right? And you feel good about yourself. You need to be your own best friend. And you need to cut away other people's, you know, strings to you. Why do we give so many other people control over us on our mood and how we feel? You know, I always liked it to do, I tell this to my friends all the time and sometimes to my wife, like, you need to feel so confident within yourself and who you are, what you stand for, that if you're going to be standing on a, you know, naked, all in mud and spit on like in the middle of a bar, shaved with no clothes, you will still feel like a king because you'll have such a rich understanding of who you are and other people's can't affect you because they can, you know, destroy your body or anything, but your brain, your heart, your soul is, is only you and you are so strong with knowing who you are, no one can affect anything. So for example, it's hard, you need to practice this all the time. So for example, if you don't get a like on our station, it doesn't dictate your self-worth because internally you know you're doing a good thing. You cannot control those things. And the thing is, if this thing comes in, why not turn this engine on, make it make your rocket go faster forward, right? And then for monetization or money thing, you know, I say it's a nice bonus. I think this thing works only if you like in extreme poverty as a nice motivator. Some people are just greedy. But for me, if I have a roof over my head, if I have food, water, internet connection, I'm happy. So for example, the material side of things only comes when I'm like, man, I need to feed other people. I need to support other people, right? I need money for Lumber Saga for this. Right, then it, it can kick in sometimes, but for the most part, I think this becomes part of this. So yeah, another thing, why I am showing this as a rocket, your rocket always has a sabotager amongst your crew. You know, he clings to the rocket and then he basically goes, rah, 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 you know, he destroys the rockets you know, and then, and then you know, destroy, <laughs> destroys everything. And he's an imposter, just like in Among Us. You know, he goes, he, he, he may be part of the crew. He will start destroying your engines. He will start sign, saying you're not good enough. And your rocket is your brain. And you have to understand when the bad thought comes in, you have to basically separate from your, you know, the guy in charge in your rocket and the guy who comes in to mess everything up. It's really nice to envision bad thoughts or bad mood or bad emotions as this imposter imposter or i call it sabotager because a lot of the times our thoughts are not our thoughts because everything that is good it comes from within and then usually that everything bad comes not from within from from the outside right so 
always think about your thoughts and what is operating your brain as a rocket and then is it an imposter doing it or is it me doing it right and if it's if it's the imposter throw them out into open space you know <laughs> but the, the cool thing or amazing thing is the imposter always finds a way how to crawl back it's impossible to get rid of him forever he will be hiding in the shadows it just you need to kick him out every time he gets in in the rocket it's like a parasite it's really hard to keep them out all the time uh, you know sometimes you can you know shoot him when he approaches back on the jetpack sometimes you can you know uh, turn the electricity on your rocket so he falls out sometimes it's too late he's already inside but as long as you kick him out you're pretty good all right and then the last thing is there's not only one rocket you have to understand that different people are, di are different types of rockets. You know, some of them are shaped like this, some have one engine, some have multiple engines. But the thing is, in our art career, when we are doing anything, this is a weird rocket, and it's an alien spaceship. So when we're going through life, or we're going through our art career, we need to understand that we can always ask for help. And let's say, if this rocket is going to like this planet, and then you go into the next planet here, or you all go into the same planet, you can always ask for help. So for example, that's what friends for. For example, you are out of fuel, you need support. All of your engines are turned the wrong way. This guy can hook you up, go there, talk to you, provide a lift halfway here, and then he breaks down, and then you lift him up. And that's why I really like the rocket, you know, uh, metaphor. It's because it's a visual cue to connect your feelings and what you're doing to. And again, because it's hard for me to think in words, I always need to think in images. So if you are a visual person like me, hope this is very, you know, um, like I, I hope like this is very beneficial to you. And your homework for this, for this lecture will be is, you know, uh, write this list out and then understand who you are, what you stand for, what your the great quest is, what your victory plan is, and have the mindset that I just told you, and then draw a rocket of yours with external, internal. You don't have to submit it if you want. If you want, you can submit it into the, I think, uh, homework eight channel on Discord. But I think it's really nice for everybody to visualize them like this because, um, you know, you'll understand yourself better a little bit. And it's a super easy way to organize your thoughts, your fears, your external, internal motivation, and understand what engines you have going and what engines you don't have going. And what's your great quest? Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Augustine is saying that I am carrying your little rockets. But you know what? Sometimes you have a mothership. <laughs> Sometimes you have a big mothership that is like, okay, come little babies, I will carry you. But then, you know, sometimes the mothership gets broken and then all the little rockets then carry the mothership. So, you know, you know, with, with, with different powers comes different responsibilities. And, you know, in my life, when I was down and I didn't have a clear direction in my life, I had people who would, you know, hook up my rocket and then have a little lift. And then when I will be good on my own and my, my, my engines are working, I go on my solo adventure now, until I need to find like, you know, I have a, I have a permanent rocket now with me. Uh, that's my wife, you know, and she's an interesting rocket too. But, you know, we are always paired now. And then we try and when we share our engines, our internal and then external fears, we share them. You never know who is in your life, right? So yeah, to summarize, you know, to summarize, your big ascend, ascending, yeah, ascending to your mountain of dreams, you need to understand that you can only go, just like in the car, 30 meters ahead, live in the present, look into the future for hope and motivation, because you tricked your heart and brain and soul for justified pain. Because if, if there's no justified pain, their procrastination of course if it's not part of your workload right and then you have to be very careful to understand that each step leads you to the next step that is going to be logical only when you get to your to the end 
all this might not make sense, but you, what you have to do is you need, you need to understand who you are and not settle for less. Always double check what you're feeling and what you're doing makes sense and it's who you are. And if it doesn't, stop it. Because you're going to, the more you progress five years into a job that you don't like, it's harder it's going to be to get out of it. So if you are an artistic person, it's better to work on McDonald's for two or three years and invest into your artistic career than go into something semi-artistic but then go into another field that you don't love, right? Our responsibility, you know, I know before God or ourselves is, you know, know who we are and become the best versions of ourselves. Because the problem with the world right now is that people are working on the jobs they hate. They're doing what they not love, what they're not meant to do, you know, partially because they're very weak and then don't have the faith and you know, the balls to pursue what they like. Sometimes people are just bound by their circumstances, right? But the thing is something got them there anyways. And it's really hard to get out now. But the thing is, our obligation is to, again, be in the right place for who we are, to be valued for who we are and what we can provide. I would hate to work on a job that other person can do better than I. So for example, when I get my freelance jobs, I always say there's, an, there's, a, there's a person better to do this and I'm going to pass on it because my heart is not in there, in this. And I should not be here. Uh, of course, if it's like a million dollars, maybe you can sacrifice your thing for like two or three months because then it lets you do what? It lets you do what you love. That's why when you go on a sacrifice, let's say I need to go on a day job at McDonald's for eight hours every day and I hate it. But the thing is, it's justified pain. Why? Because you're earning money to pay for your tablet, right? It's all about justifiable pain. And if you can justify it in your brain, you will have all the motivation in the world. If you keep it in, in your heart and you understand why you're doing this, why you're doing this battle. Because the moment the battle is pointless, you start procrastinating, you start burning out because your body and your brain just doesn't understand why you're doing this to them. So now that's why you always need to keep that in mind and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you're responsible for being the best artist Viking warrior there's a, there ever was. Because if you don't do it, no one's going to do it. Because I'm, I'm, I'll am i be super excited if, I hope this somehow helps somebody. I'm not sure if this is useful is not or not. Uh, but, you know, like, if if this helps, that's awesome. Maybe, you know, you, you, you'll get to where you need to go a little bit better. And as you can see, this is not... This is a way of thinking and to keep in mind because real reality is that it's different perspective on the same thing. You know, the glass is half full of or, you know, half empty, you know, and like you're you're stuck in your situation. Is, is it is it because you're helpless and it's a negative? Always think how you can turn it into a positive. Like for example, now I have a bunch of stories when I lived in the trailer. It sucked, it was really cold. Water was frozen all the time, right? But it, it was an advantage because I had all the motivation in the world to move out of it and accomplish something. If I was, let's say for example, in a big mansion with let's say $5,000 $5, allowance with all the food provided, with all the everything, will I use that to my advantage? Will I use this for more motivation? You know, some people would, and some people think they would, but for the most part, guys, you're not that disciplined. So a lot of the times, curses is our blessings in disguise because you have the reason to fight and then you have the reason to accomplish something. I pity people who have everything easy in their life and I strongly sympathize and understand people who have a rough start you know, I'm not saying that I'm this poor guy who always had it rough. I was always blessed. It doesn't matter how many bad things happened to me. A lot of thing, a lot of good things happened to me. You know, I am where I am. But I sympathize and I say that suffering, a suffering artist is not a bad thing. Because if you are like a, you need to be like a naked tooth or a, you know, flailing, you know, grass blade in the wind. Whew, responding to everything. And more rocky your boat is more inner pain sometimes and sadness you can channel into something productive. Like for example, look at Van Gogh. Van Gogh was 
a very broken man. But just try to understand that Van Gogh, even though he was a very broken man, he used that energy to transform it into something beautiful. Look at his colors. It's a guy who was trying not to avoid, just happened to them, but he made a conscious decision to every hardship that he went through, he would transform it into something beautiful. Like his only friend was like a prostitute and his own brother. He was, you know, he went crazy at the end of the day, then he was blamed for murder and or he ended his life. We don't know that. But I really like talking about it because, you know, there's a dissonance, horrible hard life and super beautiful art. Because I don't think people create beautiful art because their life is so great. Very rarely when <laughs> happy emotion always, you know, uh, dictates a good art piece. Sometimes you need to experience sadness and poverty to understand, to go escape from it and then and, and, and paint something beautiful and happy. And at the same, you need contrast in life. And if everything is good in your life and there's no hardships, I pity you because you need a challenge. And if you don't have a challenge, and if you're living in your comfort zone, you need to go out of it. You need to start thinking only about yourself and doing, do something for other people, uh, go travel to another third world country, you know, especially with America. America is a very wealthy country and it has no idea what hardship is anymore. There is some here and there, right? But for the most part, no, you don't guys. I'm sorry, uh, you, 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 you don't know. You don't, you know nothing Jon Snow. <laughs> There's, you know, um, yeah, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to shit talk Americans, but Americans are very lucky right now because, you know, the industry is there. Everyone has a car. Everyone has an apartment. Everyone has a plasma TV for the most part. It's very rarely, you know, the bottom line. I remember when I first went to America and, you know, the, you know, the middle class is like the millionaires in Russia. And then the poor class is like middle class or even higher in Russia. Uh, and then I was I was I was super shocked. Uh, yeah. So all of you, that person who is sitting in front of their computer and they think that their life sucks, you are blessed beyond all measures because all this hardship and all these challenges is a battle that you're gonna win. And when you're gonna emerge victorious, you're gonna have such a competitive edge over everybody, especially in America. It's ridiculous. If you look at the high paying jobs and who works for them in AAA companies, especially in outsourced companies in America, it's always like people from hard lives. And, you know, there's, of course, some American dudes who work in there. They're professionals. But a lot of the times what unifies them is this challenge that they went through. So if you have a crappy tablet, you know, I think the other day I said, um, I think this this guy named Luke said something really cool and I will read it out loud. Um, yeah, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So you have very little and if you're going to be faithful with it, if you're going to be faithful with this one brick or one pencil, you're going to do the best thing that you can do with that and you are faithful, you're going to lead to good, good, good and at the end of the day, you're going to end up with like Cintiq and a good laptop or a good job. Not specifically art career wise, like it, it, it applies to anything. If you are, if you're faithful with little, you'll be given more. And if you're, you know, if you can do anything with little, you'll be given nothing. And yeah, I also thought that if I'll have an iPad, that's when I would draw good. If, if I'll have just this job and more money, that's when happiness happens. And again, guys, I've been through all walks of life in terms of my art career. Like I had a crappy laptop, no money. And then I had really good paying jobs that was like ridiculous amount a day. And I never received paychecks like that ever in my life. I was like, wow. And I couldn't even, that's why I can take a break right now and live on my savings, right? But at the end of the day, if you're not happy with who you are and you know where you're going, no amount of money or job will bring fulfillment. The only thing that will bring fulfillment is knowing who you are and that you're doing something for a reason. Because at the end of the day, people get used to everything, money, comfort, and everything else. But if you're always going to have this heart and soul and think that you are doing this for, in the back of your mind, the money will not spoil you. It will only give you more opportunities to do things. Like for example, I'm not telling you that money doesn't spoil me. It absolutely does sometimes. But for example, that's why I can do the art camp here. It gives me more freedom because I keep in my heart and check what I want to do. And when I answer it, 
I did an art camp, right? My friends, now I can, you know, sometimes pay my friends to do a Lumber Saga animation thing. So always, ch and another thing is, guys, I think this is the last thing that I want to talk about. What is a good mentality of a healthy artist? Despite all of those things, you know, is be humble. Be humble. It's, it's the most important thing. Because you have so much temptation to look down at people who are still, you know, climbing up. And you're like, oh, ho, ho, I'm here, you suckers. You know, but the thing is, you know, God hates pride. You know, and, you know, I think just the universe hates pride. You just go down or this guy is just going to pass you. Because if you look down at somebody and you're too proud of yourself and you're not humble, you stop growing. You know, a good artist, you know, always questions and double checks if he is where he needs to, where he can push more. He knows his self-value. He knows that he's a, accomplished much, but he knows there's room for improvement. But he never looks down at anybody. A good artist never looks down at anybody. He always tries to put his hand out and bring people to their level. And never tries to hide anything from anybody. And he can talk to anybody and he never has a status or anything because you're a professional. I'm a professional. Toby's a professional. Everyone is a professional. We're all equal in, the, in our mindset. We have everything to learn from everybody. Maybe our skill level is different, but in terms of our mentality, we're different. Because the thing is, what you have to understand, if you're not humble, a humble person will outgrow you so fast, right? It's going to be ridiculous. And, you know, most artists that I love and I still talk to, they're the humble. Like, look at Joe. Joe is like the most humble dude I ever worked with. Toby, you know, he's amazing. And he probably knows he's amazing. But at the same time, he's like, oh, man, you stop it. You know, he just says that because you do not care about being better than other people. You don't care about being the best of the best. All you care is about how much you love your craft, how much fun you're having with it, and how to maintain this happiness into like this, you know, everlasting now, right? Because that's what a healthy, intelligent artist is. is love what you do, enjoy every second of it, and then everything else, money, fame, work, you know, status, it comes as a side effect of you loving what you do it doesn't come as an initial thought you pursuing it. And if you're going to be pursuing those things, you're going to fail epically. And I hope you fail epically and you go out of this industry forever because this industry is only for people, for storytellers, for geeks and nerds who love what they do and they do awesome projects. The only reason why Hollywood and everyone else and I know game companies create crap projects is because art became a money laundering machine and a money machine. And then they make money not to make art, they do art to make money. And that's horrible. And the thing is, Iron Giant, all the other projects, they were built on shoulders of people who loved what they did and they loved the story and they loved their craft. And that led to amazing successes and monetization. And now, what, what, now let's see what's happening. People stop playing, stop watching all those projects because there's no soul. There's no people who love what they do. And they don't know who they are and they're doing it for the wrong reasons. And when art is done for the wrong reasons, it usually dies. It lacks soul. And it's just a horrible cluster crap of a swamp thing in magic with, you know, dead bugs in it. And it's horrible. So I, you know, I beg you guys, if, if this is, you know, if, <laughs> if, if you like what I'm saying or in terms of it resonates with you, you know, continue doing that because if you are going to keep this, I guess, fire inside, right? If you're going to keep this fire inside of you and we're all going to do it and we're going to be faithful with the little thing that we do, eventually all of you are going to become either art directors or, you know, um, you know, or, you know, maybe rich dudes or something. And we can change things around us by keeping this fire inside us and then do our own projects. We may do a comic board an animation thing together on Discord. I don't know, but that's the thing. All the things that I talked about it, just 
understand like i didn't talk about money at all i didn't talk about this i didn't talk about that it's all coming from the inside see your guys's brain is so amazing and special it's a whole universe and if you will be able to conquer it and understand how it works to a degree of course asking for help here and there on your way you'll be so good just imagine if you implemented all of this and lived like this day to day Loving what you do, enjoying it, one step at a time, changing all the things that you can change, knowing your own rocket, inspiring and sharing this fire with other people. There'll be a whole army of us and we can do anything with that. We can create our own stories, music, anything. And honestly, that's that's what art is. You know, it's sharing and, and then changing the world around us by sharing who we are and who likes it. They, they take the fire from us and then it keeps living. You know, the cool thing about it, what we create, it's eternal. Like, for example, I create an image and then, you know, it lives in your brains. And then I do a lecture and hopefully some of my ideas will live in your brains, but then you pass it on to other people. And that's what art does. It's amazing. So, yeah, I really believe in all of you guys. If you, like, honestly, I, this is not me trying to cheer you up or anything. If you have a good juju mentality, I will call it good juju right good juju mentality you will be unstoppable because your fuel is not money your fuel is not anything else it's burning from the inside and that's another thing is not to burn up or not to burn out you need to fire yourself up all the time you need to add fuel and that fuel is me you our family, it's movies we watch, you know, for some people it's prayer and Bible, for some people it's this and that, you know, that's why it's so important to understand yourself. And if we carry this fire, we'll change the world, we'll change the industry, you know, we'll do our own epic thing and hopefully everyone will accomplish what they want. You know, it's that easy on paper, really hard in practice because you have to always remind yourself of those things. It's like an exercise. So yeah, I really believe in you guys. You got this, you got the inner fire. Uh, I think this is the end of my lecture. In terms of theory, you know, you're the best. I believe in you. Oh, we got attacked by uh, spam bots again. Uh, yeah. Hope you liked the lecture. Um, it was really special, important to me. Uh, yeah, okay. Any questions, guys? I can talk about this for another three hours, but you know what, I don't wanna say everything in just um, in just two hours. So um, yeah, again, the book, art, you know, life and death of creativity coming out sometimes in the next 15 years. I don't know. I just have a bunch of notes on my iPhone right now. So hopefully uh, it's gonna help some people. Uh, yeah. All right, how do you personally balance giving yourself the praise and cultivating a healthy amount of confidence, pride without it becoming negative? Uh, it's really hard because I think a lot of professional artists tend to self-sabotage them more in terms of they downplay who they are. But the thing is, what you have to understand, you just, you just compare yourself to other people. So you look at your portfolio and where you're at and how fast you are. And then you have other things. And then you see, yep, I'm at the same level as this guy. I should be paid 50 or $60 an hour, for example. And you're like, cool. I'm confident that I can do it. I might be better. I could be better, right? Or I'm a little bit worse, but I have these qualities. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a good job. It, this, is, this, is, this is objectively good and I'm doing a good thing, right? And then you pat yourself on the back. But the moment you self becoming self-absorbing, and usually self-absorbing comes when you start comparing yourself to other people too much and then you start feeling that you're better than them and then you're better than other other people that that is a bad way you shouldn't you shouldn't feel that way you should just say like you know if we'll see bad art and good art we're gonna say this is bad art that's it it's not you being negative it's not you being prideful you just know that it's bad art but then the moment it comes like oh yeah this art just sucks and you start just like you know crapping all over him that's when pride comes in you just have to again be conscious of it. Are you are you just thinking about how good you are, and the other person is probably suffering? You're doing so well, and or yeah, um, it's it's a hard question. You, you need to be conscious about it. Sometimes you need to gain some perspective and look at other people. Uh, 
cool. Any more questions, guys? Yeah. Wicked professional work always humbles me. <laughs> yeah, it humbles me too, you know? <laughs> you wanna be humbled? Uh, go, go look at Toby's thing. All right, question. I figured relationships could make or mess up your headspace, office, friendship, friendships, or just being acquaintances, or maybe also romantic. How do you shake that off? But guys, it's bothering sometimes. Well, again, like the other, sometimes in school, I would, I would have my buddies and then they would start affecting me negatively. So uh, your choice is to control who affects you and does have control over your thought and in what way it affects you. So for example, I had mentors that I won't be like, yeah, hell, just, you know, affect me in every way. Just come at me because you're doing everything great. You're doing everything well. I want to have whatever you have in me. Um, not in a dirty way. Uh, and um, at the same time, you are choosing who is around you. Sometimes you don't, but at the same time, if there's too negative effect, you need to have more, <laughs> sorry, boys. Uh, but for the, for the same time, um, you need to figure out who you're hanging out with and who affects you. Like, for example, like if I gonna make you feel bad or if I'm gonna make you be more productive, you should hang out around me and let's say Valhalla for artist. Right. If another person says, hey, let's go smoke weed all day, you know, and do this, and yeah, man, and uh, talk about nothing for 24 hours, probably this person is not going to get you where you want to be, right? And it's not a person that you want to share everything with. So, for example, I just try to surround, honestly, the, the main thing for growth is surround yourself with people who are better than you at everything, and then surround yourself with people who are at the same level with you, and surround yourself with people who are just starting out. Because why? You can learn from people who are better than you. You can share knowledge with people at the same level with you. And you can teach people who are lower than you. And then when you are comparing yourself and learning from the top. And then sharing amongst people who are with you. And then also teaching it. That's the best way or cycle of life, I guess. To understand the material better. And understand how it works better and everything else uh yeah sorry for a weird joke i have no idea sometimes you know my my tongue is my enemy i think it's always like you know that's what that's what she said type of a thing that me and my wife always do <laughs> i need to remind myself that you guys are not my family well for the most part some of you are but i need to be professional be professional Misha. all right any more questions if not, we can just go into personal Q&A uh, talking about your personal stuff, guys. Because, yeah, again, remember, homework is to draw your own rocket. Just remember what each engine is and then post your rocket. If you want, you can draw it. You can do it very, very, you know, you can do it for yourself. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How to understand your benefits. Well, anything can be a benefit. You know, I think it's... Benefits or advantages, I guess. Advantages, probably. Uh, yeah. Anything can be an advantage. Anything can be a disadvantage. Um, like, for example, having lots of money for one person, it's a curse. For one person, it's a blessing. For a person who knows how to spend money, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a tool to accomplish something and make someone lives better. So for example, if someone will get a million dollars, it's like, for example, with a, with a lottery, right? Right. So for example, how many stories of people winning the lottery, they said it was their worst thing ever that happened in their life because all the people started wanting money from them. They didn't do anything with it. At the end of the day, they, 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 they ended up in the worst place and that happened to them. And then some people used the lottery money for something great and awesome and invested in it and then hired a person to pay them allowance every month and they did it smart way, you know, blessing, curse. And then like I, I heard of a story, uh, I forgot the story, but Let's say if if you are yeah if you're responsible with money you're gonna accumulate a lot of more debt. Not everyone can do something with a million dollars. If you give me a million dollars, I'm not sure if I'll 
spend it wisely. That's why you, you get the advantage and disadvantage at the right time at the right moment. So for example, if you're gonna get a Blizzard freelance job tomorrow, you might not pull it off. But if you do it five years later, that's good. In terms of what disadvantages, like for example, one person I remember got cancer and he was a pretty wealthy guy. And he said cancer was the best thing that ever happened to him because in the last five years, he lived more than his entire life because that thing gave him the will to live and experiment and actually have a fulfilling life versus have a career-oriented thing. And then it, he miraculously got rid of cancer just probably because he got rid of his stress and everything else, right? For some person, it's a blessing. For some person, it's a, see, it's a, it's a curse. And everyone has an unfair advantage. Like for example, you, that's why you need to analyze yourself, understand who you are. For example, for me, my advantage is my, I think my only talent, everything else came from hard work and just grind is bringing people together, like organizing things and having something to be excited about with a lot of people. And I use that talent to do this. You know, some people don't have this talent. Some people can say it's like, you know, um, but you know, it's an advantage that I had and I don't know where it comes from, but you know, everyone has something like that. Someone is super kind and, and understanding. They can be like a psychologist or something. Someone is very, you know, uh, you know, it, it could be different things. It's really hard to point your finger on it, but absolutely anything in your life, if it's negative, try to figure out what a positive thing from it is, you know, like if you don't have enough money. That's good. You cannot buy useless stuff and then have too much junk food because now you have to cook for yourself with rice and beans and like groceries from like a market, for example, right? And if you had too much money, you would have ate McDonald's all the time. For example, I don't have a McDonald's near me. That sucks. But if I had a McDonald's, I'd probably have been much, much unhealthier. That's a blessing and a curse looking at it two different perspectives, right? So every one of you has unfair advantage some live in an interesting geographical place and you can visit something some people live in another place but it's too expensive but at the same time the studios are near right some people live in this place and then this author lives there or you are just living near a pool and you can exercise and think about it right some people don't have hot water now you can have cold showers all the time that builds up your immune system and you're always practicing being uncomfortable in a situation honestly if anything is thrown at you, try to find a good productive thing out of it. Because if you're not going to find it, it's just useless dwelling on a very useless thought that will not get you anywhere far in the, in life. It's the victim mentality that right now everyone is pushing for some reason. If you are a victim of life, then everything that is happening to you is out of your control. And all you have to do is close your hands down and die if you have a victim mentality. But if you have a warrior mentality, anything hard in your life that is happening to you, it is happening for a reason to make you a tougher, more awesome warrior, and it's gonna play a role in the, in the big plan, right? Um, yeah, so you guys are in control what you can. And you, know, you, you, you choose to be a warrior or a victim, and I don't think you should be a victim ever, yeah. Right, there's a, uh, when people say have to try everything for some reason, they don't refer to perspective, anatomy, color theory, study, blah, 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 blah. There's a cool story of a person who sold his life, all his things, job, connections, property, and he made hundred things he really wanted to do and went spending those money on fulfilling it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, guys, money comes and goes, you know. I, that's why I like to think about worst case scenario. If I become a hobo, I'll do just fine. I always also thought about going to jail is kind of nice because you have first free food second you have a daily routine you wake up at the same time you work out <laughs> all right probably not so awesome but and then you can if you have a sketchbook you're just going to be you know <laughs> you're just going to be just thinking about your own thing so i see almost anything it's like what's what's that book i forgot about the little girl um that was the game find Find something good, even in something bad. And if you can find that, that's good exercise versus trying to find something. Because, you know, you can, you can find, you can, you, can, you can be living the most amazing life out there and um, suffer a tremendous amount. And then you can have nothing. I knew families that had nothing and they had like five or six kids and they, they were the happiest people I ever knew. 
And I knew, I know, actually, I know very wealthy people who are, life is a mess and they have everything that we want, but they don't have, you know, as my dad said, you can, you can, you can, you can buy a bed, but you cannot, you know, buy love or no, you can, well, that too. You, you can buy a bed, but you cannot buy sleep, you know, uh, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can buy, you know, sleeping with somebody, but you cannot buy love and all of that. So, you know, be grateful for what you have right here, right now, take advantage of it and things that you don't have, don't worry about it. They will come at the right time at the right moment. And if you focus on your advantages, and if you're going to focus on the negative stuff, you're just going to be in this negative juju circle forever, blaming everyone and having no hope, no nothing. A real creative person is unstoppable knows what they're doing and you know even when they have no money they're outside on the road they'll laugh about it they'll have a good time you know they'll they'll pick some mcdonald's food out of a trash can and be grateful that they found that yeah yeah uh <laughs> jail no the options to distract yourself from drawing huh norway jail is an option yeah luxurious hotels yeah, uh, if there's any more questions, guys, I'm going to give you, you know, three more seconds to do that. And if you don't, we're just going to go into, um, um, okay, another one. Is it possible to recharge and change perspectives without friends and other people? Um, for some people, yeah, like I'm an, I'm an introvert. Sometimes I need to, I, I gather things from the inside. By consuming books, content, movies, you know, everything for me comes from the inside. And then usually when that's that's my relationship with other people. Usually when I talk to people, I have a horrible habit of monologuing and then trying to make another people's life better because I don't know why it's just part of me. You know, and then usually when I'm talking to people, it's very rarely when I feel that someone else is charging back me back. Usually it's my role in this world, probably God given role is to recharge other people, then go back and then charge myself up and then give. Um, and it's not me trying to put myself in the pedestal. That's how I work. It's, it's just, yeah. And then there's some people who there's like, like my dad, when I, when I go around my mom or my dad, they understand me. Like, I don't need to talk to them. I just need to be around them to feel at peace. And when I feel at peace, I'm recharged. I, I hate, you know, just, what does it call it? Just all over the placeness. You know, I hate that. I need, I need my peace. Um, and then there's some people like my wife, she enjoys the company of other people and she gets so much out of other people that charges her up. And she's an extrovert, I think, with a little bit of introvertism in her too, but she needs an environment to thrive with other people and you guys are different people you know i'm if i was absolutely alone i was i lived alone in a trailer for two and a half years absolutely alone like no one lived with me i rarely saw people and that's another thing guys solitude this is one concept that i want to give you is there's there's part of our brains as some are here i don't remember or in the back it doesn't matter it responds it's, it's responsible for the sense of i and that part of your brain turns on when you're around other people it starts working but when you're in solitude you don't need to prove to yourself who you are how you appear how you talk so a lot of times what i know that a lot of artists need to stay one-on-one -on -one with their brains and sometimes they're too afraid to do it because it's such a mess but you need to do it to you know to a healthy degree because solitude is when you discover yourself and when you actually get your best ideas, at least for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So to answer your question is yes and no. Depends on what kind of person you are. If people recharge you and give you good juju and power, go ahead. You know, and if you don't have that, try to find, like, you know, you can talk to people who don't exist anymore, who died. Like, you, like you can talk to C.S. Lewis. You can talk to J.R. Tolkien. You know, you can you can read a book and talk to those people without talking to them. And if they give you power and encouragement, cool, right? Um, yeah. Uh, and what about fingering out your power and not worse? I'm drawing many years and I still cannot understand. And what about finding out your power in artworks? Your art power is what 
how much of yourself you put in your artwork and how much your life you live and then if you put a piece of yourself in the artwork and if you don't that means you either not live in your life you need to get more perspective in life travel somewhere talk to somebody or remind yourself why you live what what do you want to what do you want to tell to the world what what do you want people to experience and experience yourself and it, the feeling has to be so overwhelming that it cannot be contained in your brain it needs to go out into your painting uh, yeah and if you're going to be searching for it you'll find it eventually it's not that you find it in every painting and every painting is every painting is a discovery you need to see why this painting is you know deserves um to live you know what's what's special about it it has to be special to you so create art like for yourself um yeah all right there's a few more laugh with your disadvantage is something that helps or maybe it needs a little dark but for me does kickstart the creative thinking and drive you know everyone likes you know the comeback story that's another thing look at your you know look at your life as a you know like a like a like a movie you know everyone would love a comeback story and he had nothing no money no nothing and then he went pff, and proved everyone wrong right uh okay right can artists successfully develop themselves to be a better individual without the influence of people can an individual survive with only solitude uh it's a really good really good question um i think our interaction with the environment there's a lot of nature and this is a very kind of like no one lives in solitude but for the most part if you need to see like my life it was always good examples and bad examples and bad examples for the most part showed me things not to do how i don't want to feel and then how i don't want to exist right and usually people are always angry and blame everyone else i do it all the time sometimes actually but when gaming um are very miserable people i don't want to live like that and that's you know it's it's a better example to look at people who again you need to have critical logical thinking to do that or sometimes you need to have other people to do it like that you know that's why we have like lecture like this you know and then you say hey i never thought about it the only problem of thinkers is you can overthink sometimes that's bad uh right push towards your goals and it made me think more my country was threatened by war recently and it made me think more if day was my last day and the best answer is living the moment harder every day like like Saul. oh sorry that that happened to you though you can even say hello to people who sell your food and they will start to smile back and tell the stories yeah you know what i talk to grocery workers all the time sometimes they totally ignore me like hey, yo yo but then sometimes they just pour their soul out it's amazing how many awesome good juju is out there if you try to find and that's another thing is if you have this kind of inner fire inside you and then you have you know just soul you know people will want that and they will feel that and your your workers or uh you know your clients will feel that because you know people do feel that um and yeah all right so this is it for today um join our lecture or again q a session after the stream your homework is to create your own rocket write down the points that i talked about today and create your victory plan that tickles your heart and soul that justifies your suffering for your brain and yeah you're the best vikings I ever know stay hydrated call i uh, see you in the q a session people who listen this in a recording hope you liked it you know if you know if you find a person who will benefit from this please send it their way you know and you know, again just keep keep working on your god-given talent you know what we do is very hard creativity takes effort doing nothing takes nothing no effort whatsoever so what's to be the best artist viking warriors hopefully today was beneficial to you all and yeah okay